Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Let's Make Dinner, your audio library of amazing dinner recipes you can always get on the table. I'm your host, Susie Weinrich. Happy Thursday, everybody. Okay, we're here for another episode of Let's Make Dinner. And I'm super excited this week because I just figured out that we are on episode 90. I cannot believe that I have 90 podcast episodes behind me. When I first started this thing, I thought, this is crazy. We'll see if this works, if this is what I want to be doing. And it absolutely is. Obviously, here I am. I'm at episode 90, and I have absolutely loved doing this podcast and connecting with an audience in a totally different way. So here we are, episode 90. We are making cream cheese chicken enchiladas, and it just couldn't be a better recipe for my 90th episode. I feel like I'm treating 90 like it's 100, but I'm super excited for the round number. Enchiladas are one of my very favorite foods to eat just in general. You know, people say, if you were stuck on a deserted island, what's one food you would eat the whole time? Enchiladas, 100%. (laughs) No question. I hope you love enchiladas too. I hope that you have the ingredients to make these cream cheese chicken enchiladas for dinner tonight. So let's get into some tips and tricks for your enchiladas. First of all, let's talk about your tortillas. You can absolutely go with a flour tortilla when you make enchiladas. It's not traditional, but it will work. And flour tortillas are so much easier to work with than corn tortillas. But On the flip side, corn tortillas are traditional. They're way more flavorful than flour tortillas, and they're just a little bit more delicate. They they make a better enchilada. If you choose to use the corn tortillas, here's what I'm going to tell you. Number one, buy a quality corn tortilla. If your grocery store has ones that are refrigerated that are maybe made locally, buy those. Those are going to be your best bet. Second of all, Buy the yellow corn tortillas, not the white corn tortillas. Yellow corn tortillas are going to have way more flavor than the white version. Second tip, if you are making any type of chicken enchilada, this is an excellent time to take advantage of that rotisserie chicken at Costco or at your local grocery store. Take off both breasts, some thigh meat, whiz it up in your stand mixer, shred it up, and use that. It just cuts an entire step out of making these enchiladas. Third tip, either make your own enchilada sauce or find one in the store that you really, really love. For a long time, we loved the Target brand uh, Market Pantry enchilada sauce because it was really tangy. It had a lot of vinegar in it. Um, but now I tend to make my own enchilada sauce. So I actually have a recipe on mom's dinner that I will link for you in the show notes and you can check out that recipe. It is so simple. Let me just tell you to make your own enchilada sauce. You literally just need vegetable oil, flour, a bunch of spices from your spice cabinet and some chicken broth. You could also throw some tomato paste in there if you want, but that's it. It is so simple. Oh, and I will say you do need vinegar and some lime juice as well, but it literally comes together in five minutes. The next tip is about your cream cheese. This recipe obviously is cream cheese chicken enchiladas. The filling is going to be a mixture of cream cheese and sour cream. So you want to make sure that your cream cheese is at room temperature. I will tell you that cream cheese comes to room temperature pretty quickly. And if you need it to happen a little bit faster, um, what you can do is cut your cream cheese into little one inch cubes, leave it out at room temperature, and it will soften in like less than 30 minutes. It happens very, very quickly. So I think those are all of my tips for the ingredients and making of the cream cheese chicken enchiladas. So let's go ahead and get into the full recipe. All right, when you're making these enchiladas, there's going to be basically three separate um, steps or portions to this recipe. You're going to make your enchilada filling, then you're going to assemble the enchiladas, and then you're going to bake. We're going to start with the enchilada filling. Dial it back a few. You need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now let's get to the enchilada filling. 
So you need a big skillet because we're going to saute some veggies to add to the chicken and the cream cheese. In a really large skillet over about medium heat, you're going to add a little bit of vegetable oil or olive oil, and you're going to saute a half a cup of chopped onion, three fresh garlic cloves, and some chopped jalapeno. Use as much jalapeno as you like. So if you like a lot, if you want a lot of spice, get up in there, use a couple jalapenos. If you like no spice at all, you could actually sub in poblano peppers for the jalapeno peppers. So you're gonna saute that for about five minutes just to get it to kind of start to soften. Now, while that is sauteing in a large bowl, you'll wanna combine the shredded chicken which actually you need two and a half cups of cooked shredded chicken, eight ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, four ounces of sour cream, a four ounce can of chopped green chilies, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. So stir that all together. And then once that jalapeno and onion mixture is ready, you can stir that in there as well. So that's it. That's the filling for the cream cheese chicken enchiladas. Now for assembly, anytime I'm making enchiladas, I do like to do kind of an assembly line to make my enchiladas. I like to have my prepared baking dish, which actually I just use a nine by 13 casserole dish. I spray it lightly with a little bit of nonstick spray. And then I put about, um, about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of enchilada sauce across the bottom, just to coat the bottom so your enchiladas don't stick to the pan. Then have your tortillas, the chicken filling, some cheese, and the red enchilada sauce. Let's pause the recipe for just a minute. If you are using corn tortillas, you absolutely have to prep them first. You can't just use them straight out of the package. They're super delicate and they will rip and tear and be a hot mess. What you have to do is heat them in some way. So if you have your own way to heat corn tortillas, go for it. What I like to do is take my cast iron skillet, put it over medium heat. I usually will put a little bit of oil in the bottom and then kind of wipe it out with a paper towel. Just get that pan hot. And then I put a corn tortilla in for about one minute per side and then use that tortilla. While I'm using that tortilla, I put another tortilla in the pan to warm up while I'm rolling that first enchilada and so on and so forth. Warm up your tortilla. You're gonna put about three tablespoons of that chicken mixture down the center of the tortilla, sprinkle with a little extra cheese, and then roll the tortilla up, and you're gonna place it in that prepared baking pan, seam side down. Now you'll repeat this until all of your tortillas are used, all of your filling is used, and your pan is full. I think this recipe is gonna make somewhere around, um, oh, let's see. I wanna say it makes, yeah, around 12 enchiladas. So once you have them all rolled up, you're going to pour the remaining enchilada sauce over all of the rolled enchiladas, sprinkle all of the remaining cheese over top, and then cover your pan with foil and bake it for 20 minutes. At the end of that 20 minutes, you'll pull the foil off and bake it for another 15 minutes so that cheese on the top gets nice and melty and gooey. You're gonna let the um, enchiladas cool for about 15 minutes. So just like um, any type of casserole or lasagna, you want them to cool for a little bit because all of the filling and the cheese and all of that is gonna set up just a little bit, just enough so that you can dish it out without everything falling apart. When we serve these enchiladas, we love to do just like two enchiladas per person. And then I love to have some little topping garnishes for these enchiladas. We'll either do um, fresh diced avocado, a little bit of chopped cilantro, maybe some green onions. You could do shredded lettuce or pico de gallo. And then of course, your traditional Mexican side dishes. So like a Mexican rice, refried beans, um, I just published a great recipe for corn salsa that would be a great garnish to these enchiladas. I also have an excellent pineapple side dish that's pretty much for Mexican food. It's fresh cut pineapple with this honey, orange, cilantro, lime glaze that goes over it. It's an excellent side dish that I don't think a lot of people expect when they're having 
like enchiladas. You expect rice and beans, but pineapple is a wonderful fresh side dish you can add to the mix. And then one more side dish that we love is um, a cilantro lime slaw, which actually would be a great garnish to the top of these enchiladas as well. So of course I will link all of those recipes, all of those side dishes, and I'll link my favorite margarita recipe in there too if you want to have a little margarita. And um, you can check all of those recipes out. And just so you know, you can find all of these recipes that are on this podcast on my website, momsdinner.net. That's where I share all of my recipes. You can print them, cook from the website. You can actually even text yourself the ingredient list and a link to the recipe. You can pin it, print it, whatever you need to do when you're ready to make any of these recipes. If you are enjoying these episodes of Let's Make Dinner, I would love to have you subscribe or follow or rate and review our show in your preferred podcast player. Until next time, I hope this episode of Let's Make Dinner makes your dinner time a little easier. See ya! All right, guys, now it's time for your double dip. Thank you so much for sticking around. So in the double dip, if you've never been here before, it's where we talk about the recipe that's coming up next week so that maybe you can get prepared and get the ingredients you need to cook along with me next week, next Thursday. So what are we making next Thursday? We are making baked barbecue meatballs. I love a meatball. And this barbecue meatball is no exception. It has great flavor for this time of year. You know, we all kind of start thinking about a little bit of barbecue here and there. But this one, you don't have to have a grill. You don't have to be outside. You can just make your barbecue meatballs and enjoy. Okay, so here's what you need to grab for next week's episode on Thursday. One pound of ground beef, one pound of ground pork, two cups of bread. So this could be French bread, white bread, ciabatta, any kind of bread will work as long as it's not a super seedy bread. Half a cup of milk, one large egg, one and a half tablespoons of your very favorite barbecue sauce, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon each of garlic powder and onion powder, a little sprinkle of smoked paprika, kosher salt, and then, of course, some more of your very favorite barbecue sauce to glaze the outside. So I hope you'll join me next week and make these. And let me tell you what goes really, really well with these are my garlic mashed potatoes. You can do them on the stove or you can do them in the Instant Pot. They are perfect. My mouth is watering. <laughs> they go perfect with this barbecue meatball. And then maybe some green beans on the side is mwah, perfect. I hope you'll join me then, and until next week, have a wonderful week ahead.